with Chris Singleton. I'm John Shambu. Thanks for joining us. We're in the sixth and nobody out. And here's the first baseman, Matt Mervis. Pitch misses inside, and that's ball one. Puts it in the air out towards left center. I got it, I got it. Bye, bye. Harris calls it in, and there's one away. Here's the catcher to hit, Kevin Parada. And a good fastball to start him off. That's strike one. Goes down looking for the strikeout. Throws him with the heater at the knees. Now the third baseman, Jacob Berry. First pitch doesn't find the zone. There's a strike. Right-handed reliever. Good oh, eye in that spot. Okay, all right, here we go now. In the air, left side. Harris under it. Bye, 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 and that bye. is the third out of the inning. Three up, three down. Colin Cobra comes on now. And this could be a pretty critical point in this game. Well, this was a tightly played game. Got a little of everything. Some timely hitting. Runs on the board. Key pitching and defense in certain spots. Definitely a fun one to watch. 4 3. He's saying. We go to the bottom of the first, and now the shortstop, Jose Caballero. Now a drag bunt, third base side. And safe! Bang, bang play, but speed wins on a great effort there. Next to hit, number 18. And that's in there for strike one. And ball one. This is one of those situations the infielders have to pre-plan and understand that the ball's got to be hit extremely hard right at them if they're going to have a chance to go for a double play. One gone, bottom half of the first. And now the DH, Dalton Kelly. In the dirt. And no movement on the bases. It's ball one. The 1-0. Oh, back off the plate. Ball Runner at second here, one gone. Swing and a miss. Two and one now. And that one just missed off the outside edge. And it's fouled away. And a 3-2. And a foul ball, he stays alive. Payoff pitch. Line drive. He hauls it in, two away. Drew Ellis getting ready to hit. First pitch, and that's in for a strike. Caballero on its second with two down. Next offering is in for a strike. The pitch. That one down the line. The throw to first, third out, and that ends the frame. We head to the bottom of the second, and now the first baseman, L.J. Jones. Fought off foul. Well, after scoring runs, this is where you're looking for that shutdown inning. Get that hot team back in there to swing the bats. 0-2 oh, as he oh, waves at that one. And the pitch. Keeps the at-bat going with a foul ball. Hey, get him yourself right here. Let's go, baby. Swings through it, and that's a strikeout. 
Oh, nothing too fancy on the strikeout pitch right there. Just a low 90s fastball, and I'm not sure he was trying to challenge him, but that's pretty much what happened. Very hittable location, but he found a way to just get it by him. This guy's seen two change-ups in a row. Could be a little vulnerable for a fastball right here. Line drive to short and caught. Two outs, base is empty. And stepping in is the speedy number four. There's a strike. And he takes a strike. No ball, two strikes. The 0 2. That one drilled left field just inside the line, and it's down for a knock. Now he turns and heads for second, and he'll pull in there with a stand up double. Good job of just putting the ball in play with two strikes. Got a fastball, middle of the plate, jumped all over it. Absolutely Aye. smoked that ball. Carson Taylor in the box now. No balls and a strike. Slow ground ball to the right side. He takes it on his own, inning over. So one hit. Bottom half of the third, and they bring in a new pitcher. Number 10. A 4 nothing shutout in this one for Chris Singleton and Aaron. Within 48 hours, this player will be in a new city and putting on a new uniform. Before the break, we were talking about how exciting it is for these young players getting called up to AAA. Carlos, when you got called up to AAA in 2001, what, were you, what was going through your mind? Well, you know what? It was a big jump because now you're getting players that are veterans coming down from the big leagues to AAA. So the level of play was a little bit more advanced. So this is where you get tested. And if you succeed in AAA, you pretty much secure your spot. At the very least, they think that you're ready for the big leagues, and then they don't hesitate to call you up. Yeah, that's it. When you're jumping a level, you're excited, you're eager to find out where your talent level sits with a talent above the league that you come from. And if you want to make it to the major leagues, you got to prove yourself at every level. Well, they're at the doorstep of the big leagues. Ready to go. Leading off for hey, a Udi Snowball. Now. The pitch. Ground ball left side. Fires over to first. One out in the top of the first. Drew Gilbert will hit next. Yeah, that's too high. Next offering is in for a strike. Just missed. And he hits a ground ball right side. On the run, throw to first. And a couple of quick outs. Two outs, base is empty. Now here is J.J. Matichevic in there at the knees, and it's 0-1. Line drive, base hit. Number 82 now at the plate. Swings through that one, 0-1. And there's a foul ball. Struck him out looking with the off-speed stuff. One. Second inning set to go. Here's the catcher, Gaynor Diaz. And that pitch gets the corner, and that's strike one. They say it went. No ball, two strikes. 0-2 now. The punch out there, one away. So digging in, number 90. In there, and it's 0-1. Here we go, guys. Let's go. Just missed. No score here in the second. Fouled off to the right. A 
Left field. Lede gets under it. And he makes the catch. Two down. This lineup's going to have to find a way to make him work a little harder out there on the mound. I mean, he is just mowing him down. He's settling in. you got to make him uncomfortable. Maybe step out of the box, call timeout, do whatever it takes. And he flips a breaking yeah, ball in ball there or a changeup. Either one. <laughs> Something off speed. Good arm action one on ball. it. Whatever Two it was. Out. Got him. And good work there as he gets a one, two, three. Back here at the ballpark. Now the left fielder, Mauricio Dubon. The bit behind with that swing. It's strike one. Dubon getting the start in left. 28 years old. He's been on a terrific run at the plate, hitting over 350 in his last 10. Next offering is foul back. Foul ball, it stays, nothing in two. The pitch. Fights that one away, and the count remains 0-2. And, and here it comes. Swing and a miss for the strikeout. Pulled the string of the changeup. And now here's a speed threat. Outfielder, Matthew Barefoot. And he swings and misses at the initial offering. Barefoot hitting ninth in today's lineup. And he was a sixth round draft pick back in 2019. Back to back strikeouts. Well, just excellent location on that inside fastball really locked him up. And it's a hitter. It's not typically what you're looking for. You're trying to protect away and then in. So you can be a little bit tardy with two strikes. Hard to tell if he was fooled or if he thought it would be called a ball. But either way, that's a really nice pitch. Pulls the string with the changeup. Struck him out. A sport other than, you know, the eye test. I mean, when you go in there and you look at a football player, you look at hands, feet, uh, uh, how tall he is. You know, in baseball, we look at what he does on the field, how he performs on the field, how he moves. Uh, that is the most important thing of, to a baseball player. It isn't how big he is. I mean, we've had great players who are 5'5", five, five, and we've had great players who are, you know, 6'11". You know, those are the things that separate our sport from everywhere else, every other sport, is that we look at how big that heart is, not how big you are. Carlos, for so many prospects, that first With the season's outcome coming down to a final series, a manager chooses his words carefully. Well, we spoke earlier with Kellen Lee, mental performance coach, about superstitions in baseball. And now let's get a player perspective on it. Joe Maurer, the former American League MVP. Joe, your teammate for so much of your career, Justin Morneau, was notoriously superstitious. What were some of the things that he did pregame? Oh, my goodness. Uh, where do I start? Um, <laughs> he had a few of them. Um, I remember he had a, um, an old hockey jersey T-shirt that he wore under his uniform for every game. And after about 150 games, that shirt jersey wasn't looking too well. So um, he would wear it, and he was convinced that uh, that was contributing to his performance on the field. So, um, you know, I was, I was all for it. I was making sure that that, that T-shirt was ready to go each and every night. But he would, uh, he would have a lot of different ones and how he prepared his meals. And we had teammates making uh, different uh, shakes for him before the game at certain times. So... We just wanted to make sure the big man felt good and, and felt good going into the game. You're out!
So we're coming to the end of my YouTube video right now, so give a thumbs up button if you like the video so much. Click on that bell button to subscribe for more content, and if you saw the recent video interesting, share the comment right below the description so you can share some thoughts and feelings with everybody in the community and make them feel welcome. So I make a happy Corona 95. You all have a great day, and peace out.